What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. Okay, I'm excited. So, if you guys haven't watched the vlog, the vlog is already up on the channel. I'm gonna post the vlog before I post this video. But I actually came first place at our locals today. I think it was 19 or 20 people. And uh, we're playing pure Kashtara. I think this is like one of the best decks of the format. It's one of those things where it just plays well into everything. And it doesn't really lose super hard to anything. So I'm excited to be bringing you guys this. This is my first locals back actually playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm really excited because I can actually show you guys how good this deck can really be. All right, so let's get into it because this deck is insane. All right, so we're playing three Fenrir, of course. This card is insane. People play around this so much, and when they're playing around this, they forget to play around all the other Kashtara cards, and they forget what these cards do. So, of course, with Unicorn now back at three, this is a one-card combo. This card is absolutely insane on its own. This also ripping from your opponent's extra deck is very relevant. I feel like, again, like I said, people play around this, but they stop playing around cards like this, and they also don't play around this. And when you're not playing around these names, you lose to like silly things, right? Like me ripping one ofs in your extra deck that you need to part of your combo. Ogre ripping like, let's say I know your top deck is is a combo piece, right? I can rip that top deck card. Or if I know that top deck now is a brick, I can just rip something out this engine piece and then I know you're drawing a brick, right? So it gives you knowledge, which is really important as well. And in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, knowledge is the best thing you can have, right? So that's why, of course, you have, to, I mean, you have to be playing this. This is your best card. The consistency here is crazy, right? Uh, one Ogre, we're playing three Rise Heart, of course. This card is absolutely insane as well. This is set up for so many different things. It's insane. I always, like you getting to birth, being able to banish a Theosis to get something back, being able to banish Ogre, and this was my go-to play all day. I would have birth, let's say with this, right? I'd go this, search birth. If I had a Fenrir, I'd get to a Fenrir. Then I'd summon a Rise Heart, Rise Heart to banish the Ogre. And then I would go birth, summon back the Ogre. And that's my end boards. Because my end boards ends on a banish, a banish from the extra deck, and a banish from your deck. So that's absolutely insane. And then we're playing one of the Scareclaw Kashtara. This came up only one time today. Its effect is kind of insane. So anytime your opponent's monster battles a Kashtara monster, its effects are negated. And then this can also attack in defense position. So it's really nice. So one of the Scareclaw Cash. That's it for the monsters. We're playing three Wraith Soth as well as one Terraforming of course. Very important to be playing these ones. Consistency. I will not, there's nothing more to say. Uh, we're also playing three Theosis, three Birth, and one uh, Prep. I'm not playing Big Bang. So this is pretty standard. I think I don't think anyone would change this up. But uh, the one preparations is really important over playing Big Bang. You're not ever zone locking for five. You're never zone locking for nine even. And so that's why I thought Big Bang wasn't really important anymore. What you can do is you can just go preparations and it sets you up for follow up, right? So the really cool thing about prep is remember that line I was telling you about where you end on one, two, three, four. First of all, it doesn't play into nib because you're only summoning four times. And then when you end on birth prep, it means you have infinite follow-up, right? Every single turn, you have follow-up, which is absolutely insane. So that's it for the Koshtar engine. It's quite the large engine, but uh, they're all really good monsters on their own. The crazy thing about these is they're kind of like pseudo boss monsters, right? So that's the Kash engine over here. Then we have a lot of non-engine. This is an honorary Kashtera card. This card is absolutely insane. I don't know why it's not banned, but the fact that this is not banned means we can play Kashtara and it's just absolutely insane. So three Shifter, three Ash, three of the Ghost Mourner, three Imperm, and this is not a hand trap, but three Talents. Uh, I really like these today. I don't think I changed these too much. I really like how they look. This is the only thing that I felt was very underwhelming today. In theory, I played it because it plays well into Shifter. Like Veiler, you can't play Veiler with Shifter, right? This you can play with Shifter, which is really nice, but there never really was a situation where this is good. The only only other really cool thing with this is because it's a level 3 tuner, you can make level 10 synchros. But I don't know how I feel about this. Moving forward, I'm not sure what I want to do with these. This is really good, of course, really good into format, right? So that's it for the non engine. And then lastly, or 38, 39, and 40 over here, three prosperity, just more consistency. I use this all the time in games two and three to just dig into side deck. That's it, because the deck is so consistent. This is mostly just digging into side deck over here. So 40 cards on the main deck on the dot, wouldn't change that up. I'm gonna show you guys the extra deck here, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think I legitimately used like four cards in my extra deck the whole day, maybe five. Like the fact that the main deck monsters are pseudo boss monsters, like I said earlier, the extra deck is just kind of bonuses, right? So we're playing two Shangri Era. I would make him sometimes when you have access to uh, Wraith Throat, you really want to end on this because it's another form of disruption, right? So that's why I really like playing the Shangri. I mean, you have to play it, but you don't make it as like a go-to. If you don't have the field spell, you don't make this really. This is my favorite card in the deck. This card's absolutely insane. Being able to pop a card, but not only pop, it also banishes. And the fact that you can banish like cards like your uh, Theosis, which then triggers Theosis, absolutely insane. So I made this a couple times. I didn't make this all day. I think there was one situation where I could have made it. I didn't end up making it though, but 
uh, still a really powerful card you have to play. Uh, didn't make this all day either. This I made one time to go into time. Really good powerful card. This I never made. This I never made. This I never made. Good cards, never made them. This also, in theory, simplified game states. You really want to play this. I never got in a situation to play it, so I didn't. Never came up. Never came up, but unfortunately it's format tax. It's really good, but never made this either. Never made this, never made this, never made this. Like, yeah, just just play cross spotter. That's literally it. They're all just cross spotter. They're very expensive cross spotter, but so it's cross spotter. I would say, and this is what I say with like decks that have a lot of extra deck space. Typically, you can play super poly and break boards, but super poly doesn't work with this deck because the cost of monsters you need to have to no monsters, right? So that's why you can't play super poly. Just play good cards and then cross fodder, right? So side deck. I didn't really like it that much today. I think I'm gonna switch this up. But I played two pank, probably my favorite card today. But that's really it. This I never saw. I sided it in, never saw. Sided it in, never saw. Sided it in, never saw. Sided it in, sided it in, never saw. Literally the only card I saw from my side deck all day was Pankratops. That's it. Like that's literally it. I saw nothing else from my side deck. So that just speaks, I think, volumes on how powerful the main deck is. But in theory, this side deck should be really good. Uh, Lava Golem, for example, is really good because you don't need your normal summon in the deck. So if you're able to just start your turn by breaking your opponent's board with Lava Golem, if you're able to special Fenrir, you know, or you have a birth and you can go from there, it's really powerful. Summon Limit was my tech for the day. And that's because I had, four, I had 14. I didn't know what to do for 15. So I did this for 15. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna be honest. Side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference. Like I said, other than Pank, I saw none of them all day. And yeah, guys, that's my first place deck profile. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you all for being the cameraman. I still think Cash is underrated. People don't talk about this deck enough, but it's just one of the most powerful decks in the format. Just having access to Shifter, having access to main deck boss monsters, absolutely insane. So uh, that's really all I gotta say. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you all for again. With that, Spanko signing out. Peace.